Hello friends, it's Sherry from Turquoise Dreaming. How you doing tonight? Welcome to my channel and thank you for joining me. So this is going to be uh, the first in a series of uh, videos to show you how I make a journal out of a book. And it's uh, the last couple of journals I made out of a book. These spines, they were Reader's Digest and I used the spine of the Reader's Digest so I didn't take the cover off the spine. But when they're like this, this little tiny spine, like these books here, then that requires a new spine. You can see how small they are, right? And I really couldn't get very many pages in there if I tried to use this spine. So I thought I took a poll and the most requested, uh, you know, journal was the journal or the tutorial where I show you how to make a journal from, from a hardcover book. So, and in between these, I'm going to try to meet the other um, people that, uh, you know, voted for the other tutorials, the smash book wire with the wire bound, uh, like cinch or bind it all type of binding. I had 16% uh, on that. And in the TN or traveler's notebook standard size, I had 21%. So I'm going to try to actually, uh, in you know, once in a while in between these videos showing you how to make this book kind of journal out of a book, I'm going to try to insert some videos on how to do the other one so I, you don't want anyone to feel left out, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, or have to wait too long for, you know, how to do the other types of journals because these are a little easier. The folder, the file folder, actually somebody asked for a file folder too, so file folder and the smash book and the TN I think are a little easier and quicker usually so I'm going to try to put those videos in between these videos and we'll just do them all at one time hopefully I don't know that might be too much for me but we'll see I'm going to try it so first of all I picked up my books and what supplies I have here are my paper cutter a pencil a ruler some duct tape this is D-U-C-K tape, it's called, that's the brand, but it's like duct tape, D-U-C-T. <laughs> a uh, box cutter, and my scissors, and some cardboard. And I think that's all I need. I think I have everything I need here for this stage. So let's start with, uh, I'm gonna try to do all three, just to give you a good idea of, you know, do it once, do it twice, and by the, by the third one, I think you'll have a good idea of um, how to do it. It's it's easy, but um, you know, it's. Uh, let's see. I need to grab one thing. Where is my? Oh, here it is. I got. I have it right here, covered up by my cardboard uh, to protect my service sur surface. I have this pl uh, placement here to protect my table, but I also have this glass mat here to protect my every everything from the blade okay so let's start off with the biggest book and let's look to see how it's bound this one's uh, I think I can get this off I'm taking the whole the whole spine off so I don't really have to worry about cutting into the spine you know as far as uh, like if you're using the spine you don't want to cut into the spine so I'm going to go ahead and just cut. I'm just trying to see how I want to do it here. I'm trying to see how it's supposed to see it's, um, if I were to do it like this, I wouldn't be able to get into the crevice here that I need to cut. So I'm going to leave it right here for a minute and see how this works. Just cutting it right here. Some are harder than others. Usually they're, usually they're easy, but you know, depending on how they're put together, some are hard, some are easy. Most of the ones I've done are, I have all, you know, I haven't had a problem with. They're easy. I would just be say, be careful with the blade. It is sharp, of course. And you're supposed to cut away from yourself, <laughs> not toward yourself, like I just did. So let's, I'm cutting to the side now, so as to be more careful and not cut toward myself, like I sh shouldn't have done. Okay. And I'm probably being a little more, more careful on camera than I would normally <laughs> be. 
uh, you know, if I was just doing it, I kind of might, might be a little bit more, you know, not as careful, but I, I still would be careful not to hurt myself, of course. So there is one. That's the back cover. Let's do the front cover on this one. It came off actually really smooth, too. Like, can you see that? It's really smooth. I might, I might, might cut right here. But I might not. You don't have to. So let's get this front cover off of here. This was a journal, a pretty journal that I showed in the first video where I was talking about which book I was going to ch going to choose for my next project. And I haven't actually chosen yet. That's why I'm kind of doing all three. Just kind of get started on all three and then I might just focus on one when I start doing the pages and things like that. So... Almost got it. There we go. Okay, I will trim that up a little bit there, but there's my cover, my first cover, and here's my pages. And I'm going to put these to the side. Here's the little spine still on there. <laughs> well, it popped off there. I guess it was just glued on to this part. So, yeah, that just popped off. Cute. It says William Shakespeare. I'm going to save that until I decide what I you know, whether or not I'm going to do anything with that. I'm going to put it back here in back of me on my dresser with uh, the pages. Let's go ahead and trim this one up a little bit with, see if I can trim it up with my scissors a little bit here. Just kind of cut that extra off there. It's pretty good way, the way it is. I mean, it's going to be covered up anyway, so you don't have to get it, like, exactly perfect. But I thought this was a really pretty cover. So, and I just thought it looked like, I mean, it is a journal, so it's a really pretty journal cover. So that's one. Let's do the next one. The next one is this friend, little friend's book. And it's smaller, of course, than that one. So let's just see... How is this one put together? About the same as that one, probably. Now, this one's spine is a little bit looser. This one has the spine not glued to the pages, so. But let's go ahead and cut it off. There we go. Well, it's got a little bit of paper. It's just like pa papery right here. Let me just cut that right off. And that's getting into cut some cardboard there. Okay. Pretty smooth. Okay, let's get the other that was the back cover. Let's get the front off here. Let's see. Let me go ahead and get the pages out first. And then I'll cut the spine off. Okay, there's the pages. Let's put that back here and then get this little spine off. That'll be easier without the pages in the way. scissors to it here so it doesn't rip up this front cover. Okay, now I'm just clean it up a little bit. It's 
Sometimes I use my paper cutter to cut some of this off of the spine. That's why I have it here. But uh, not really necessary. And you'll see why later, but it's, this is going to be covered up anyway. So there's the second one. All right, now one more. Cutting off this one. This is the oldest one. Really nice book. They're all really nice. That's why I'm having trouble making up my mind. Let's see, this one is, let me go ahead and do this one like I did the last one. Go ahead and take the pages out first so they're out of the way. This little spine, isn't that pretty? Cut off the little spine. Let's see where we want to cut here. I guess we'll cut right against that little, right against the, the, the uh, spine here, if we can. Yep, it's going to let me. put this over here out of the way and then this this piece here this one's coming off really clean pretty much if I can cut straight let me move up move myself up here a little bit so I can get some leverage on this Quite get the uh, back paper off, but we'll get that off in a second. Okay, this is a really thin one. <laughs> Look how thin that is. That is tiny. But let's see, we've got some extra paper here to cut off. So we'll just get the scissors and cut that rest of that off. Part of it's off, but not all of it here. So we'll just cut that off with some scissors. Okay, looking good. Okay, this is trash and this, I don't know. I'm gonna put that back here with the pages. So I think we might be done with that. And I'm gonna move this out of the way, but keep it handy in case I need it. Okay, so let's go backwards here and do this one first. So I'm going to make a one and a half inch spine on all of these. And I have cardboard here. Uh, this is some pretty thick cardboard. I save all the cardboard I run across that I think would be good for a spine. And I have some thinner that's not necessarily for a spine and some thicker. This is a thicker one. I have this one here, the same type of thing, a thick, a thick spine cardboard and this one also is a very thick cardboard I don't know you probably can't tell on camera how thick it is but it's pretty thick so uh, let's do this piece first and so I'm going to get my pencil which is right here and measure I'll go ahead and measure one and a half inches See where that is, make a little one and a half inch mark with my pencil right here. Okay, and I'll go ahead and cut that first on my I just cut that. Usually I can cut the this this uh paper cutter I have here cuts through this, usually cuts through this. <laughs> Watch it make a liar out of me tonight, but uh usually cuts through the cardboard pretty easily so. 
Let's see if it does it for me tonight. Yep, okay. That's one and a half inches. And let's go ahead and cut it down to the length of the book. So I just put it like this uh, on my spot, on my book cover. You know, you can put both of them there if you want to make sure. You know, you can see it lines up evenly with the bottom here. I'm lining it, lining up exactly evenly with the bottom. I don't want it sticking out. I don't want it too short. Okay. And then up here, I'm going to make a little line right here beside the top of the book cover. I've got a little pencil mark there and that's so I'm going to cut that now. Right on that line. So you can see I have extra cardboard here in case I made a mistake and I had to do it over. You know, if you if you don't cut it right the first time, just do it over. <laughs> it's no big deal. It's just cardboard, right? So this looks good. Let me make sure I did it right, even with the top and the bottom on both covers, I would say. I'm going to line up the top and then I'll, okay, the top looks even and the bottom looks even. It looks good. Okay, one spine done or cut. Let's do another one. So my poll said, do you want to see, you know, what journal, what type of journal do you want to see from start to finish? So I'm going to try to do everything on camera, sewing in, <laughs> you know, cutting the spine like this, everything. So if you have any questions after each video, just ask me in the comment. Okay, so this one I'm going to, let me cut the one and a half inches first. And... Then I'll cut, let me get this out of the way. Then I will cut the length about one and a half inches. Right here. Okay, now let's cut that on our paper cutter. If you don't have a paper cutter, you could make a line all the way down. It's just a little mark. Instead of a little mark like I have, just make the mark, make the line all the way down and cut it with your scissors, you know. I'm just using this because I have it, but if I didn't have this, I would use, just use a pair of scissors, sharp pair of scissors that cuts, that will cut through cardboard, you know, or, or a strong pair of scissors, I would say. Okay, so let's do that again where we're going to get our length even it doesn't matter whether you, whether you know whether you start with the top or the bottom just wherever you want to start I'm talking starting with the top on this one lining it up with the top and then here's the bottom I'm gonna make a little line here right even with the bottom Again, you could make that line all the way across if you're cutting with scissors. And cut right on that. I cut right on the line. Or I'm putting the line on my, my cut line here on my paper cutter and cutting on the line. Okay, let's see if that's right. Looks good. Okay. Hope you can see that okay. So that second spine uh, cut. Now for this one, this book I needed a bit a longer piece of cardboard, so that's why I have this one. Let's see. Now see that's not long enough. It'll have to be from this side. So let's get our one and a half inch first. Okay, right here. 
in. This one is a little thicker. Let's see. I hope this one goes through. My paper cutter goes through this one because this is a little thicker. We shall see. Get everything in the right spot here. Lined up with my line. Pushed up against my little bumpers here. Nope. It's not on the line now that I push it up against the bumpers. Let's move it over. Okay. Everything jives. Okay, let's cut. And hope for the best. Is it going to go through? <laughs> let's see. I feel it. I can hear it cutting, but I don't know if it's going through. So that's why I'm going back and forth a few times here. So, uh... I think it might be through. Okay, let's pull it and see. Yes, <laughs> we made it. Okay, so we're done with this. Now we're going to get our length on this one. And it doesn't matter. See, it's cardboard color on the back and white. And it doesn't matter because it's going to be uh, covered up on both sides. So doesn't matter which way it goes. Line it up with the top. Line it up with both tops. <laughs> you don't have to do that. You can just use one side. I'm just doing it for the for the video. I probably usually don't line it up with both sides. Okay, looks even. Up there, let's draw a line right here. Yep, that looks good. Okay, one more cut paper cutter, and you will be done for tonight. <laughs> yes. Okay. There we go. So we're done with this cardboard, and. the ruler up there. I don't know if I'll need that again. Okay, since this is here, let's do this one first. So all I do now for this uh, video is going, we're going to tape, we're going to tape the uh, spines in place and then the next video will be uh, cover, covering the spines. So this is pretty marbled paper in here, so I don't know if I'll cover that. I might because it doesn't have a lot of color. And I might want to have more uh, vintagey looking colors, like out, you know, what you see on the front. So, okay, next all I do is get your, get your, um, I mean, I'm trying to get my placemats and everything straight so that I can see straight, you know what I mean? Like if everything's crooked, <laughs> you know, you might get something, I might get something crooked. Okay, so line everything up here. We're going to tape the inside of the cover first. And you want a little gap in between your cover and your spine on both sides. Okay, that's for bending. You have to have that so that your book will bend. I mean, just like it originally was, it had a little, a little divot or gap. Not really a gap, but like a little divot in between the spine and the cover so when you redo when you make a new spine you still need that little divot so it can bend okay it doesn't have to be very big but it has to be there a little divot okay I just want to make sure that looks good okay so I use this duct tape because I've tried different methods I've tried just taping something on and then taping and then gluing or gluing something on and then gluing the fabric and you know uh, this is just the easiest way to do it for me. I, I just really love it this way and it feels this tape it it you know you can you don't have to have a glue under this tape. It's super strong. This brand I like Duck D U C K. Uh, there's probably cheaper brands out there of duct duct tape. But this brand, I just got this at Walmart, you know, in the craft department. And I like this one because 
it's neutral colored it's like looks like burlap okay I originally bought it because I was going to use it as the actual spine you know this tape and you know let it show on the spine but then I decided it was too shiny you see how shiny it is but but then I found out I saw what a you know strong spine it made and I loved it so it's easy and just super strong and sticky and <laughs> it's awesome so you can see what we have here I think I've explained everything pretty pretty good so far but if you have any questions just let me know in the comments so I'm going to put two pieces of tape like this so you can see I just unrolled it enough long enough to cover my spine so far on this back part so I think we'll do the wrap method which is the easiest way go ahead and do the wrap method and I'll show you what I mean by that but uh, I don't know how far my fabric I'm probably gonna put paper paper and fabric over this spine so I don't know how far my fabric is gonna go over uh, so I just want this tape over enough onto the cover to uh, you know to hold on to hold the spine on this new spine onto the cover so let's do it we're gonna put it about half and half and I'm gonna try to line it up <laughs> I dropped it okay I'm gonna try to line it up with the top here and actually you know what you don't have even have to make it it would be easier not to line it up with the top let's do that we're gonna let it over you know go over the top so about half and half you see I can't see now okay a bit over the top like that okay I'm just trying as I, I'm thinking as I go along the easiest way to explain it and you know I would I'm kind of overthinking a little bit now that I'm on camera but here we go okay we can we can press it down more later basically right now you just want to get it on there and get it on there straight no wrinkles or anything right Okay, now we're going to turn it over. We're doing the front cover first. I've just got it hooked to my placemat here. Okay, turn it over and see how it was sticking up a little bit. You didn't have to worry about getting getting it even with the top. I just let it stick over the top because we're just going to fold that down, and you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about anything not being smooth at the top because you just folded that over and it's nice and smooth nothing to cut off okay and then we wrap we so we're wrapping it around we wrapped it around the top now we're going to pull this up and undo some more tape see it's really strong this tape is so strong but uh yeah i have to pull kind of hard to even get it to unwind right so we've uh, unwound it all the way to the top here you can go ahead and lay it down you know even it up with that piece you fold it over at the top see how I've got it even and just lay it right down there if it's not perfectly even it doesn't matter you're covering this up with uh, fabric anyway but I've got it pretty even there and then I'm going to take my little scissors here they're a little bit sharper than those other scissors the bigger scissor, scissors, scissors that I was just using so I'm going to cut this off right here, and I think you're, you probably got the idea already. You probably don't even need to see anymore, right? <laughs> but we'll go ahead and do the rest of them. But uh, let me show you how good it looks. Like I just, you saw what I did. I brought it to the top, and you can't even see where actually, hard, you know, I can see it, but I can't hardly see where I even cut it off. That's how good it looks. And you can see how why I wanted to, and it already bends nice. You can bend it and make sure. Because at this point, you can always kind of rip it off and do it over if you you don't like what you you know have accomplished so far. But let's do the other side. And I hope you don't mind the detail, but you know, for for a beginner who has never done this before, that's what you need, right? You need a slow kind of detail just description of what to do you know so again we're going to do it that same way let it stick up a little bit we've got you see our gap 
everything straight. Okay, we're going to overlap it on the top, about half and half, just like that one. And so actually our tape is going to meet in the middle, and when you do a one and a half inch spine, that's how it works out. That's kind of, that's my favorite size spine to do. I've done, a, I think I did a three inch, I think I've done two inches, and I've just kind of settled on this uh, one and a half inch. It's just love it because it's not too big it's not too small you can get three signatures in here you can get more depending on how many pages you put in each signature you know what I mean and uh, so let's turn this over get my, okay gotta get my tape keep my tape straight as far as not getting it knotted up or something. Okay, so what, what, what we did before was we folded our tape over the top. Okay. And then we bring up our, bring up our, or bring down. It's easier to pull on this than to pull this way than to try to pull that way. For me anyway. Okay, before I put it down, I'm lining it up with my top tape here that we folded over. Okay, it's lined up, smooth, everything smoothed out, no wrinkles. And get my sharp scissors again. Cut this off. I'm gonna get into a position where I can see and cut straight, right? There we go, that's better. Now I'm going to put that over there for a second, smooth this down, again nice, nice seal, and you want to make sure when you're doing this you've got your covers going in the right direction, right? See everything's going up, nothing's upside down is what I mean, just make sure you don't do it upside down, and you'd, then you'd have to start over. <laughs> So there we go. See how good that looks? That's why I like this tape. You could always leave this on here as a, if you wanted to, you could leave this on here as your spine cover. See, it looks really pretty and neutral even with this, these colors. Looks really good. Okay, I kind of love it already. Okay, one down. Let's see if we can do the next one's a little quicker because you got it now. So I don't need to explain it anymore, right? I'll just do it. And these two and you can watch okay when I said covers right side up right covers right side up let's do it got our little gap little gap It's like you want the gap to be, you want the gap, you don't want it to be too big. <laughs> That's why I'm kind of really picky about the gap. Okay, that looks, that looks good. That looks good. Okay, again. We'll do the front, we did the back, I think we did the back cover first that time. Let's do the front cover this one, on this one. Give that paper there. Okay, I think we're good. Overlapping at the top. Okay. Get it down on there so it sticks good. Turn it over and pull it down. Whoops. I don't really want you to stick yet. I didn't uh, fold my top flap down yet, so we'll do that in a second. I just need to pull in this first. Okay, let's let's fold this down nice and tight. Okay, now we're gonna fold this down nice and not too tight, but you know it's on there. Good. 
try to get it even with our top tape. Like I said, if it's not even, it doesn't matter because as long as it's closed, you're going to cover it up with fabric, right? Okay. Now let's cut that off. And we'll do the back. Let's we'll press that down a little bit more. Ends good. Okay. Right side up, right side up. <laughs> good idea to keep checking that. All right. I'm going to meet up with the uh, other tape on the, you know, this one. Okay. Let's turn it over. Go ahead and fold this down. Cut it off. Fold it down. Okay, let's press it down real good for a second here. Since we just put it on, we want it all on there. You can see how that one looks. Got a nice big spine now. Not too big, not too small. Just perfect for this little book. Looking good. Okay, one more. Hope you don't mind doing me doing all three. I figured it would be good practice uh, for anybody that might be learning to just see it done three times. I'm not going to do all three of these books at one time into a journal, you know, make them into a journal at one. I'm going to figure out which book cover I'm going to use and then do a one journal at a time. But uh, I just thought it would be fun to go ahead and get the covers ready, right? Okay. okay. Let me look at this cover for a second. I think I'm going to try to make this tape a little bit more less over on the book. So to do that, you just get your spine, your little gap, everything even, and then just don't put the tape over so far, right? So I'm going to do it like about like that I think so it's going to cover up most of our spine but it's still not big enough to do the whole thing at one time so about like this I think would be good and we can put more on the back there's probably nothing on the back that we can't cover up so you know I'll decide in a second how I want to do the back but Go ahead and wrap this around and see how we did with uh, with the coverage here of the tape on the front cover. So actually, let me turn it around. Fold this piece down. You can already see it here. It's hardly even. It's just about a quarter of an inch over, and that that's fine. It'll it'll be fine. It'll hold it, and it'll be fine. 
Okay. I'm going to get a nice even fold here and then I'll start pulling down. Even there with the top. Let me see, I don't want to wrinkle. Didn't want to wrinkle. Okay, that looks good. Straight. So you want it straight. Well, we're going to cover this up with a little bit of fabric or something, you know, lace or whatever, something like that, but it's going to cover up this edge. So. Okay, let's go ahead and cut that off. So you can see on this one, I need to see, I need to see over here for a second. But you can see on this one now the tape is going to be overlapping up quite a bit. So we're actually going to have you know the chipboard or the cardboard and kind of like two layers of tape on this spine. So that's you know even stronger. That just makes it that just makes it stronger. Okay, now almost done. We are making progress. Okay, so everything right side up. This one, well, I mean, can you even do it upside down? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> so uh, everything is going in the right direction. You get a little gap. Okay. Now let's just get our tape going. Up on the top. Let's see now. Let me decide how far I want it over on this one. I want it over a little bit farther, but not too far. So let's see. About right there, maybe. Yeah, that'll be good right there. Farther than the front cover, but not too far over. Okay, we'll go ahead and press that down. Okay, turn it over. Pull down our top flap. Nice and smooth. And then we'll pull this up from the bottom. I kind of hold on to the, uh, for me, this is what's, what works for me, I hold on to, I'm holding on to the cover and the tape here. It's evenly over the bottom, and then I'm holding on to it so I can pull, just in case you're wondering how I'm, because I, I try to pull on just the tape, but it's not enough, uh, it's not strong enough for me to, or I just doesn't work for me that way. <laughs> so... All right, let's just make sure everything's smooth and we don't have any wrinkles and everything's straight here before I cut it off. Looks good. So hopefully you didn't think that was too hard and that you'll try it or you just enjoy watching these books be made. But uh, I love it and I love this way of doing it. Because like I said, I tried other, at least one other way, maybe a couple other ways and this is absolutely my favorite. No glue is involved so far, right? And this is really super strong already. So we're done with the tape now. And we've got, now at this point you can, uh, if you want, if you don't think you're, you can push down into your little gaps here. If you don't think your tape is, you know, that kind of seals it right there into the little gaps. You know, you can see, see how that folds in nicely. It all looks good and even on this side too, good and even. Uh, you can push into your little holes here. Uh, it kind of goes in there naturally when it bends anyway, but you can push it down into the little gap. See how that looks like a professional book right there, like uh, the original cover did. So, yeah, I think it looks good. They all look good. Here's the other one. Let me get everything out of the way because we're done for tonight. So let's uh, look at this one. See how it's going naturally into the grooves? 
We can push it down a little bit. Make sure everything's smooth. And then the same thing on the inside. If you want to make sure everything's going where it's supposed to be into your grooves and everything's smooth. So you can see the cover here and how it folds all nice. You know, that's my goal. Like I said in my, uh, when I did the cookbook journal just a few videos ago or a couple videos ago, videos ago, the Better Homes and Gardens, I like it to be well made. I, I really like it to be, I, I mean, I'm like this in my every day of life too. I always tell my husband when he's doing something, you know, Mr. Fix It is fixing something around the house. I'm like, make it look professional. <laughs> I don't know. I I try not to be a perfection, you know, perfectionist because I am a perfectionist, and I um, try not to drive people crazy with that because you know you can drive yourself crazy with that. <laughs> but uh, you know, to a certain extent, it's a good thing, right? To make things look professional and well made. I just I don't know. That's me, I guess, but. Anyway, everything is looking good here. I pressed into the little crevices, pressed into the crevices. And next, I'm going to look for a fabric to go on all of these. Maybe I'll come back and do the fabric. That's what we could do next, because I don't know when I'm going to decide which one I'm doing first as far as the pages. But next, we could uh, I could pick out fabric for the spines. And this one... I like the paper in here. Can you see that green with uh, the white leaves? It matches the front, so I gotta leave that right. So just covering the spine on this one in front, inside, and out. Uh, this one covering the spine on the outside. And like I said, I think I want to put some pretty papers in here and fabric. So that'll be that one. And this one uh, fabric gotta leave these beautiful vintage covers or papers here fabric at this point you can also decide how you want your closure like you can decide in your closure later but say you want uh, something running under your like this one would be a perfect one to put a closure underneath the whole thing since I'm going to put paper here and here you could run a strip of fabric underneath that whole thing and then put down your papers and your spine fabric and you'll have that nice uh, tie closure underneath everything so that's perfect for that one this one and this one could have whole you know we could put eyelets in the covers uh, just things to think about before you put your spine fabric on in case you want to do something under the spine fabric but eyelets would be good in this one too so you know we could wait on that I could do you could do a hitch post closure you know after the fabric or you can just do a wrap around tie not attached kind of little tie closure too at the end and not worry about that now this one I'm going to think about since I'm putting the papers here and I think it would be cool to run something under that I like to do that if I can if I'm putting papers and you can also think about pockets too like you know if you love this old vintage paper maybe you don't want to cover that up and maybe you don't want any pockets or tuck spots here in the front but you can always put lots of tuck spots in the pages and so you don't have to put tuck spots or library pockets or anything inside the cover so just think about that if you're making one with me and uh you know otherwise just you know craft along with something else or just watch so thanks for watching tonight and i hope you enjoyed it and like I said, just let me know if you have any uh, questions in the comments. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching and happy crafting.